Do you realize that your fitness tracker, earpods, smartwatch, or even your smart glasses are all parts of communication? Little did we know this is what we called as wearable communication. This type of communication has been with us since 20 years ago since the first wireless devices have been invented. With the rise of the Internet of Things and wearable electronics, Bluetooth has very well been integrated into our lives. But how does it work? The extent of knowledge about Bluetooth technology could be anywhere from the magic that makes my smartwatch works to each short wave having 2.5 GHz radio frequency used to establish a beacon between two or more devices. The idea of what we call Bluetooth today was first introduced back in 1989. Dr. Niels Wrightback, the chief technology officer at Ericsson Mobile, and inventor Dr. John Allman had this revolutionary idea of developing a pair of wireless headsets. Because well, let us be honest, cord and wires are annoying. Moreover, do you guys know where the Bluetooth come from? It all started when Jim Kardec, work from for Intel, read a historical book about the Viking King Harald Bluetooth Gormson, unite Denmark and Norway. He got a rotten teeth which looked kinda of bluish, so that where he got a nickname, Bluetooth. So that was it. This, that story inspired Kardec to propose his idea of calling this single short link device that will unite communication, Bluetooth. Enough with the history, now let's take a look at the concept behind Bluetooth. Bluetooth works like a Wi-Fi. It uses radio waves to send data between devices at short distances. Now, whereas Wi-Fi uses radio waves to transmit data between your router and your devices, Bluetooth does it between devices. So basically, if two things have a Bluetooth option, then they can transmit data between each other. This communication of sorts is measured in gigahertz. For Bluetooth and Wi-Fi, it is usually at the 2.4 gigahertz frequency. When we say Bluetooth, it's mean connectivity between devices because this involves both a signal and some hardware on the hardware side. Both devices need to be equipped with an antenna supply chip that can encode and decode in transmitting data via an antenna. When we are trying to connect to a device via Bluetooth, what's going on is the device that is said to be discoverable, usually the one with the final output like a speaker, send out ping signal that can be detected by other Bluetooth enabled device. The devices together you just form a piconet. Piconet known this isn't a just use to catch a yellow Pokemon. Pikachu net, Pikachu net, Pikachu net, Pikachu net. Okay. Piconet is a micro network of recognizable radio wave communicating back and forth between devices. The Bluetooth modulation technique originally was Gaussian frequency shift keying GFSK. However, two forms of phase shift keying were introduced for Bluetooth 2 to provide the enhanced data rate capability. The first form of PSK is Pi over 4 DQPSK. This is a form of phase shift keying known as Pi over 4 differential phase shift keying. It enables the raw data rate of 2 megabit per second to be achieved. Another state is 8DPSK. This form of Bluetooth modulation is 8 point or 8 binary phase shift keying. It is used when link conditions are right and it allows raw data rates of up to 3 megabit per second to be achieved. Thus, this means it is faster. The way Bluetooth works raises a few security questions as well. Like all the wireless networking setups, we will always have concern of sending personal data using radio waves, noticing that the data might fall into the wrong hands. When Bluetooth first came out, it was straightforward for someone to access your information even without your permission. But over time, this technology has become more secure. Bluetooth manufacturers are aware of the risk. So they have already improved a lot to make the device even more protected against security threats. All in all, 
I still say Bluetooth and wearable technology is a lot better than getting tangled up in cords and having to change CDs in your car. Just turn on the Bluetooth and we are ready to be connected to a bunch of amazing and fun technology. So, what kind of wearable devices did you use in your everyday life? And what for? Let us know on the comments below. This video brought to you by me, Max Alexander Robert. Me, Alexander Anderson. Anyway, this one. Thanks for watching.